Adam says, nah, nah, I'm not going to read this one. I think Adam has an agenda. So, Adam, if you don't, write me later and I'll look at it, look at it in a better light. David says, I've heard many Bible teachers say the account of the 12 spies searching out the promised land was an exaggeration on their part of the size of the giants. That's what a lot of these Bible doubters, the people who, well, now the original Hebrew, that was really nephal. And really, it's not giants. Really what they were, they were just mean people. So anyway, however, the Bible teaches that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a thing is established. Numbers 13, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. Why don't you just believe the Bible? Uh, David, and, and, and I, I appreciate this, because the Bible, and I pointed this out in the Giants video, the Bible specifically tells you why that was translated Giants. It's because that's what they were. That's what God calls them. Well, but, you know, really in the originals, uh, all right, somebody named uh, Alan Carr could, I don't know what that means, says, I was shocked to hear you say in Sunday school a few weeks ago that God forgives all sin. While God forgives many sins, he is unable to forgive all sins. Really? Because I just thought that 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what the Bible... now. He's, this guy puts up a lot of verses here. Matthew 25, 41. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And I guess this guy's saying that, see, it proves right there that God doesn't forgive all the sins. It doesn't say that. doesn't say that. Oh, well, read about Revelation 22, 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. But it doesn't say that God can't forgive all sins. Because I'll tell you, back in my NIV days, God, God laid it on my heart that I was wrong, and I repented of that, and I've never turned back to the NIV ever again except to make fun of it, and God forgave me. Your verses that you sent, and he sent several up here, the verses that you sent, whoever you are, a, a lawn car could, or I don't even know what that is. Your verses don't say that God doesn't forgive all sins. But 1 John 1, 9 says that he forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. If you're shocked that I said that, you should be. I believe it. I don't know why you don't. Tracy, my question. Over the last couple of months, my life has been going through much hardships in every area imaginable. I know that all things are filtered by God for our good. Is this me or are others also experiencing these troubles as well? Well, let me hear from everybody. Tracy, you're not alone. I promise you, you are not alone. And I'm going to go back to this verse that people misquote all the time. There is no, such, there is no temptation that befalleth man which... Let, you know what? Let me, I'm going to butcher the verse. Let me, let me find it. Where is that? 1 Corinthians 10, 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You see, there are things that come on us, we can't handle. God gives us a way to escape. That's how we're able to bear it. We, God pulls us away from it. But, uh, Tracy, I'm going to tell you that you're, when you fellowship, that means we're all in the same ship together. And you're going through stuff, 
and I go through stuff, and people all over who follow the, who follow the Lord and love the Lord and love the Bible, there. Th listen, it's part of this life. We are going to be persecuted for righteousness' sake. We are going to be despised. We are going to hit hard times. We're even. I'll tell you this. There will even be sins that we thought were conquered will come back on us. But God is so faithful, Tracy. He is so faithful. He is so good. He brings us through these things. And we often don't, we don't know why we had to go through this. But God says, just trust me, Tracy. Trust me. I've got it. Trust me. I'll carry you. Trust me. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Trust me. I'll save you. One of these days I'm going to come and get you and put you in heaven. And you'll never have this anymore. And Tracy, remember, neither principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor trials nor tribulations will ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Don't ever forget that, Tracy. Uh, let's see here. D says a lot of scripture verses, and I'm not sure why you sent it to me, D. Give me an explanation, please. Dave says, throughout the Old Testament, God tells of the abominations of the heathen in that they sacrifice their chil children to their fallen angelic gods. And he writes in parentheses, planned barrenhood. I like that one, by the way. Planned barrenhood. When a child's mom and dad are fully human, this practice is certainly an abomination. Here's a thought, though. And the word thought and though look almost alike. When the giants or any other hybrid race, which are literally of the seed of the serpent seed, uh, do the same practice, wouldn't this technically be a good thing because they're killing themselves off and God has commanded the Israelites to kill all the giants, including the infant children, in the first place? Um, hmm. I, I think you're asking me if when the giants killed their children, sacrificed to the Moloch, was that okay? Um, well, I mean, I kind of see your point here. Uh, but we would look at that and say, that's an abominable practice. That's terrible. That's your own offspring. That's your own child. By the way, the beast nature of animals, there are some animals who have no concern for their young whatsoever. And I see that as being part of this beast nature that people have. They're so infested with these devils that they have no natural love for their own offspring like some animals don't. You Australians, your kangaroos, when that little joey comes out of the birth canal, the mama just sits there and if the joey, the little worm, doesn't make its way into the pouch, mama don't care. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Sean writes in and says, uh, Dear Pastor Mike, I avoid all these talk shows and celebrity gossip shows, but my wife told me that she heard Katy Perry was off somewhere scheduled to meditate and to soul search, that she tweeted something about the phoenix is rising. Boy, I wish I would have known that before this morning. I just recorded the Watchman broadcast about the phoenix rising. Um... He says, I did a quick search and found the following tweets from Katy Perry. September 9th, sending out an SOS. September 14th, I can feel the phoenix rising. September 15th, starting the day with a group meditate. The 16th, getting some blank out of my chakras. 18th, I ate, I prayed, I climbed a volcano. She also posted a photo of herself on top of a mountain with her arms stretched out. You've seen that in uh, Sunday school literature, church websites. I thought this was interesting. Wanted to give you this update on our favorite little singer besides Lady Gaga. Keep doing what you're doing. I watch you every week. Appreciate that, Sean. I can feel the phoenix rising. You know what she's doing? She's doing Kundalini is what she's doing. Um, interesting. Brenda, 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 Brenda sent me an email, and I re-forwarded it to myself. Brenda from Canada. She says, I love how you love us Canadians, eh? Uh, a friend of hers invited to a conference in September, the end of this month, called Create. Um, she said, this is something I need to share. You know what, Brenda? I was going to do a screen capture of this and get a picture of it, and I failed. I failed to do it, Brenda. I apologize publicly. But uh, she talks about this, and I have the, let me pull up the PDF here. Uh, it's called the Create Conference. The Create because, oh, 
I took a picture of a Joel Osteen book that goes right along with that. Hang on one second here, and I'll pull it up here. It was on my, my mobile phone. Here is Joel Osteen, and I like where they put the... Um, I like where they put the price tag right on Joel's forehead. Isn't that a beautiful smile? And the name of the book is called I Declare. 31 Promises to Speak Over Your Life. You know what that is, don't you? It's witchcraft. I Declare. The name of this conference, and apparently it's in a uh, Assembly of God Church, Pentecostal Church, uh, is called Create. Basically, you speak it, and you're going to create it because your words have created thought. That is witchcraft. Um, there's a, another seminar, she says, coming up October 9th and 16th, uh, the ClarenceCounselingCenter.com. This is what their seminar is about. Simon and Ruth present weekend seminars entitled Laughing All the Way to the bedroom and understanding and meeting your mate's sexual needs church church seminars that's disgusting oh by the way um, Brenda don't go eh appreciate you sending that to me eh Adrian, watch your doya. How you doing? Pa Dear Pastor Mike, I love the WVB on the ceremony. Can't wait for part two. I will be preaching for the next two Sundays at Lighthouse Baptist Church, Almere, A-L-M-E-R-E, -E, the only KJV only church in the Niederlands. Whilst the pastor takes a holiday, a little bit nervous, please pray for me that all goes well. Love in the Lord, Brother Doyle. P.S. Thank you for the marked gospel according to John and Romans. Great witnessing tool. We sent that in our watchman's packet. And anybody in Niederland that wants to go hear someone of like mind, uh, go to Lighthouse Baptist Church, Almir, Almir, does anybody, Ricky, you know where that is, Almir, and uh, Adrian, Watcher Doyle, is going to be preaching there. Go and support him, and, or at least let him know you're praying for him. Jordan from Australia. Hey, Pastor, my brother, oi, by the way. My Pastor, my brother and I were having a discussion on evaluation or maybe that was evolution. Sometimes Mike, some, sometimes autocorrect uh, will change that. Have a discussion on evolution. We're both KJV born again believers, but we come to a difference of opinion about microevolution. Him thinking it happens and me not thinking it does. Please help scripturally. God bless and love your work. Let me let me help you with scripturally. Micro, if I under, if I remember right, microevolution is the idea that there is, even if you believe in creation, there is small amounts of species evolution going on. Let me tell you why I don't believe that. And of course, the, the, pro, the evolution idea is that um, this evolution is making the species better. Now, what we do see is a degradation in the genetics of species, all including humans. Uh, but I don't believe in microevolution per se, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, verse, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 9, The thing that hath been is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And here it is right here. There is no...